Hey guys, Chris Serino here for Sultana Education Foundation's Virtual Classroom. Today we're going to be looking at a really famous painting by an artist named John White. Now John White traveled to what we today called the Outer Banks of North Carolina in 1585 and one of his jobs was to make watercolor paintings of the scenes that he depicted. And he made a series of paintings about Native Americans that he saw and the communities that he was witnessing. And these are some of the only primary documents that we have of the Native American cultures of this area during the point of first contact. So this is probably his most iconic image. This is a Carolina Algonquin warrior. And the title of this painting is The Manner of Their Attire. So to tell you a little bit more about some of the details on this painting is my friend and colleague, John Mann. Take it away, John. Thanks, Chris. So as we look at this painting, let's check out some of the details and uh, try to make sense of what's going on here. Uh, if you look at this man's hair, first of all, you can see he's got a few feathers uh, sticking out of different areas of his head. And this might be a little hard to make out, but he's almost got a mohawk. So his hair is longer on top and then shaved closely on the side. Uh, and that was pretty characteristic of most archers because if you picture them drawing the bowstring back, if they're right-handed, they're gonna shave the right side of their hair so that the, the drawstring doesn't get stuck and pull their hair out. Um, we can also see another sign of an archer. He's got this leather wrist guard over, his, uh, over the hand that would be pulling back the bowstring, and so that was to give him some additional protection. He's got the bow itself is taller than he is, okay, so we would call that a long bow, something that would be used to fire great distances. And hanging over his back, he's got a quiver filled with arrows. Uh, so one of the advantages of bow and arrow over a flintlock musket is you were much more quickly able to reload a new arrow into your quiver. Um, he's got a lot of jewelry that he's wearing. So it looks like some earrings and quite a few necklaces, uh, beaded bracelets over his wrist. Um, and then his body is adorned in a lot of painting, a lot of markings. Um, we're not sure exactly what the symbolism means. We don't know, understand enough about their culture, um, but we can be sure that that has some sort of significance to them. And then his clothing, he's wearing a deerskin hide um, kind of draped over him. Um, but really we can just see this as an impressive warrior uh, and he would be someone who was well suited to this task because his village was gonna depend on him to be successful anytime he went out hunting. So we're gonna send it back to Chris for a wrap up. So that was an awesome overview of this painting by John. Thanks for that, John. I'll say the last thing and probably the most mysterious thing that's a little bit unsolved is what this tail is right here. So there's one theory that maybe that's the tail of a bison. Uh, bison were known to every once in a while wander as far as the East Coast. There's also theories that perhaps this is this person's hair, a long braid of hair that goes almost down to the ground. So we really don't know the answer to what that object is. But just a remarkable painting. Again, artist John White, 1585, published in 1590, an incredible primary document to tell us, us a little bit about the Carolina Algonquin Indians. So thanks for watching Sultana Education Foundation's virtual classroom. We hope you'll check out some of our curriculum items on the webpage and uh, study up. This is really neat stuff.